Hello, Matu Dumain, you're watching Hornbill TV's newsroom. The Guwahati High Court on Friday annulled the appointments of 935 police constables made by the Nagaland state between January 2018 and October 2019, citing the absence of any public advertisement for the positions. Justice Devashish Barua, presiding over a single judge bench in Kohima, directed that the state to initiate a new recruitment process for these 935 constable posts by issuing public advertisement in newspapers. The court also ordered that the recruitment process be completed within six months. The petitioner's indigenous unemployed Naga youth argued that despite meeting the qualifications and eligibility criteria for the constable post, they were denied a fair opportunity as the respondents were appointed without any public notification. These disputed appointments were made over a span of nearly two years. And to discuss about this, we will be joined by our associate news editor, El Muli from the newsroom. Hello, El. Can you hear me? All right, El, to begin with, can we first know, uh, and for our viewers to know as well, uh, what is the official recruitment process for police constables? Uh, let's start with that. Yeah, generally, um, there are three processes here. Uh, I've never been to a recruitment process, but I have had a lot of friends and people from my neighborhood many years ago who used to constantly, almost every year, right. try their best to run through one of these examinations and the police department is of course a very secure job for most of them and mm -hmm. we have a lot of people who are engaged in this so these are the stories that have told us uh, practically there are three main stages to appointment or two uh, first is physical and medical examination of course before you reach the physical and medical examination there has to be some kind of a vetting process which is similar to a background check so this is not primarily the uh, one of the selection processes but after you have been through the vetting process you have to go to the medical and the physical examination stage so from there you have to meet certain criteria for example height you have to match your BMIs you have to see uh, that you are clear of any uh, uh, health conditions in your body and of, of course there has to be some kind of a rigorous demonstration of your physical capabilities in athletics for example running so uh, these are some of the stages the primary stages and if you go through all the medical the wedding process the medical and the physical examination then the next is of course written but now um, there are different different categories of police personnel some are for management level positions such as officers some are for those in the lower strata of the organization the foot soldiers the one that are there in the streets they are the one that are put to administrative action they are the ones who enforce it so these are the constables for example the foot soldiers so uh, for the examination for the constables they uh, it is not as stringent as the examination that they have for officers which is again a different matter so after this uh, the vetting process, the medical and the health examination comes to uh, written examinations. Those who have passed through all this, naturally they move into the interview stage. And the interview stage is where the final selection, ideally the final selection is done at the interview stage generally. All right, so now how are merit-based selections ensured during the recruitment then? I'm not sure Atu, about this question because uh, we are talking about 980, how many of them? 985, right? So we have more than 900 people who according to the court were appointed illegally. Right. So the idea of merit, especially in a state of Nagaland, seems to be a little challenging idea here. But, but ideally, Compared to all the other agencies of the state government, the police department should have been the paragon of virtue here too. Mm -hmm. Somehow we can accept the fact that 
maybe in some departments there could be illegal appointments, right. some kind of an under the table arrangement, but police department no. So if our police department is corrupted, then I don't think there has never been a point of time where the premise of merit performance or excellence was used as the yardstick for us to be able to say, hey, our police officers are all upright. They are the ones that are ideal to be keeping law and order in the state. But yes, generally, the police department should be the one, the ideal, the epitome of all excellence and merit when it comes to appointment. But unfortunately, we are embarrassed in the face of the nation. So. I think the story itself is self-explanatory too. Right, uh, and like you mentioned earlier, when it comes to the selection of uh, police personnel, there are certain criteria that they have to pass through. They should have the certain qualities when it comes to medical and also physical. So do you think that now that 935 uh, police personnel have been appointed without all, all of that, going through all of that, do you think that you right. know the quality of work, the quality of service, of course, like you cannot question but do you think it would be a little you know uh, downgraded now that I would be, we wouldn't be getting that what we deserve the service that we have oh that's that's relevant why not oh way back uh, way did you hear that I know <laughs> Goodness, I, I, I hope that the Chumugidima administration and the police administration in Chumugidima will take care of all these noisy bikers. It's exceedingly annoying. So anyhow, that's a very, very relevant question, uh, Atu. So when I was rep reporting those days, we, there used to be a joke among the reporters. So we used to say, especially for those who joined without prior experience in news reporting or mm -hmm. editorial leadership. So we used to say, you know, ah, I need experience me I corruption report no in Abni you know, we used to make fun of each other. So it is relevant. Really? Because in order for you to function with excellence and to give your best effort that would justify the profession you are in too. Right. You will need to be equipped not only in the skills of your profession, but you also have to be s equipped in your ideal system, in your moral system. So if I'm going to join the police department illegally through some under the table action, then it means if I'm appointed and I'm put in charge of the safety and the security of the citizens, I'm going to overlook crime because someone passed me something under the table. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to take care of criminal activities or address them. I'm not going to put my heart in them because my skills and my moral system is not upright enough, equipped, strongly equipped enough to be, for me to be able to deal with that problem. So practically that's why in, in Hollywood, movies we say you know bad cop bad work good cop good work mm -hmm. so what you're saying is relevant so if this is the kind of system that has been going on until some unemployed youths came along and said hey 900 of you are illegally appointed if someone had not pointed out then i question the credibility of all the police officers in our department right now who have been appointed during the past right. 30 or 40 years. Right. So uh, definitely, if we're going to keep appointing people like this through this kind of a system where there is no credibility, then I don't think that we are going to get credible services mm -hmm. in all forms of police enforcement. It could be in justice administration. It could be in criminal enforcement activities in the community. So I don't think that we are going to get what the police establishment has always promised the society, safety, security, and justice. I don't think so.
Fidel, I totally agree with you on that. I think it's not just about the police department, but, but elsewhere as well. When right. there's backdoor appointment, if you're not mm. skilled enough to do that, of course, we'll, the mm. we, we the people, we the common people will not be getting the service that we actually deserve. Right. And I totally agree with you on that. And moving on to the next question now, uh, what steps now that the Guwahati High Court has already squashed the appointment of all these 935 uh, police personnel, you know, what steps will now be taken about the appointment or the recruitment? What is the next step that's going to happen for the for the people who have been ejected from right. their appointment right now? Right, right. Um, see, it's we can sympathize with them in the sense that now uh, the appointments were made during 2018 right. and 2019, which means they have been in service now. Mm -hmm. So for some of them, there will be a question of age restrictions later on. Mm -hmm. That is one of. Uh, the problems they'll be facing and for those who might not be uh, dealing with a problem of age restrictions later on now that they have been removed from their job there will be question of unemployment naturally for them so if they are under uh, if they are not above the age limit then I think there are options for them to explore other opportunities in the industry but in case they have not yet and if uh, the the decision of the Guwahati High Court stands, then I think the next option is they can go to the let's say uh, Supreme Court by claims of being in service for some time, and now they have they have used up some portion of their years for which now they will not be eligible to be employed in other sectors of the state, for instance. So I'm just saying that okay. these are some of the options they might they might engage if anything else but now that the Gaji High Court has already said this is illegal then I don't think that they can contest with, with this verdict because this is not like you know you went to the pawn shop and they gave you <laughs> an adulterated food item and then you go to the court for redress this is a corruption case a straight out illegal appointment case so I do not feel that ideally they will be moving through this action for further judicial action in this regard at all. And uh, since you have been in this field for quite some time, more than us of course, is this the first time that it has happened where you know the, uh, the court has quashed such a kind of appointments when it comes to the police department or any kind of departments? No, for police department, I think this will be probably the biggest number of them, like mm -hmm. 985. Yeah. That's an entire battalion in the Indian police hierarchy. The battalion has about 950 to 1000 personnel in a battalion. There's a lot of them, a huge number of them. So uh, yeah, anyhow, I do not remember, I do not recall at any point of time that such kind of an action was taken by the court. I, I don't recall. We have had a lot of them in the education department. Right. I think uh, way back in 2008, f uh, about 5,000 of the teachers were found to be illegal, illegally appointed and they were removed. And unfortunately, the government brought them back in because of, you know, concerns about their welfare and employment so anyhow so we have had a lot of people removed from their positions in the government the education department i think social welfare also mm -hmm. and even in the police department i believe that such kind of actions were taken against a few number of police personnel for this and that con conduct including criminal conduct mm -hmm. but not for a specific case of illegal appointment with this much number of them being removed from their position. No, I don't remember. You have also mentioned earlier that there was uh, such incidents in social welfare and also uh, the education department, but would you say that um, considering what's happening right now, would you say that the police department is one of the departments where appointments as such, back to appointments are made on a large scale? Uh, if we have the court telling us that we have appointed n more than 900 people right. illegally, then I think it's easier to say if we go back and just, uh, by the way, uh, by the way, I, I read the newspapers and we've been waiting for updates from the government, but so far nobody is talking about an investigation. Mm -hmm. 
Like ideally, the chief minister and the home minister should be, for the sake of their credibility too, they should be announcing an investigation in this regard, more on it later on. But yeah, definitely if we have 900 people being removed from their position in the government from a single department and not just any department here, but a law enforcement agency, the agency of justice of the state, then we don't know there could be five, six thousand or 20, 30,000 that might have been appointed over the past 60 years. Right. We don't know. So this should actually offer us, the public, a chance to introspect on where we fail as a community and society. Because it is not so much about the removal of 985 personnel from their positions in the police department. It is about the future of our security. It is about criminal investigation and delivery of justice to the common people. So substandard products is going to give you a lot of problems. Mm -hmm. So the society, the community organization should actually be taking note of this and generally, you know, we should be, we, we should be representing our voice on a public platform for the government to address this adequately. Uh, if we have a broken uh, system that promises to deliver justice, then the, the services that they offer to the community will also be broken. It will be substandard. It is a very basic idea of product and use. So definitely, uh, this is something we should all be uh, worried about. And if we're worried about a police department, let's worry about the other departments right, also. Exactly. See, the police are doing it. How easier it is for the other departments. So it's easier for them to follow this process because the agency of uh, criminal enforcement and justice itself is doing it. So I think we should, I think we should think a little bit deeper in this. Also, okay, let's bring uh, unemployment here. When it comes to Nagaland, of course, your um, unemployment is one of the biggest issues here. And uh, you get a job, and if you're getting it, you know, from back to appointment or anywhere else, and even if you're not interested in that job, you go seek for the job because you want, you need that job. Right. And when it's uh, there, you're, even if you're not interested in that particular field, that happens. Mm. So do you think now this unemployment and everything, is this all related when it comes to the police department as well? When th there might be people like, you know, uh, they're not even interested in that, but they got this job for, you know, from somewhere, so they got there. So how does it all relate? Employment or unemployment is the heart of it too. Right. Uh, definitely just like you say, if someone is unemployed and if he does not fit the skill set that certain professions in certain industries demand, then certainly it's easier for him to find anything that he can lay his hands on. Right. So it, it, would, it wouldn't be like, okay, I have a graduate degree in this and that field, I have this degree. But it doesn't matter if you're seeking employment, that even if it does not fit, fit your field of expertise or your field of education, you're still going to go for it because there is no other option for you. So and Nagland, we, we keep saying that Nagland has about 70 to 75 registered unemployed youths. But I think they are referring only to students who registered with an employment exchange right after they graduated. Even I am registered because during those days, uh, in order for you to get a provisional transfer certificate, once you graduate, mm -hmm. you, were to, you were supposed to get an unemployment card mm -hmm. or registration. Everyone does that, whether you're employed or unemployed, whatever field that you go in, whatever profession that you pick up. So that data might be very old, but according to observers, especially in the media and people who are in the social education sector, it could be around maybe two, three lakhs youths. I'm not talking about middle age unemployment. I'm talking about the, uh, the 80 to 35 unemployment age group. So it could be much, much higher. So the number itself, 900, more than 900 people in the police department appointed illegally, says that there are a lot of 
unemployed workforce out there that can be observed. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, we wouldn't be having this many illegal appointments in the first place. So everything comes down to unemployment. And the fact that in a single government agency, we have more than 900 police personnel appointed illegally, how much more would there be in the other departments, let's yeah. say? So as you mentioned, all come turns to unemployment and uh, all of that. But uh, would you say that you know, the question here is how were they appointed in the first place if the illegal appointments would be discovered later? And also the role that their backgrounds and the political backups that it plays. Could you please focus more on that as well? Uh, in Nagaland, I, you know, I know, your father knows, my mom knows, your cousin knows. Everyone knows that in Nagaland, if you don't have an MLA, have an MLA or a minister, you can't get work done. Mm -hmm. All of us, we say it. My mom used to say that, my grandfathers, your boyfriend, okay. your husband, everyone knows that. You need an MLA or a minister to get work done in the Nagaland government. So. I was reading the response of the Home Minister yesterday right. and forget about quality checking vetting processes in the recruitment, forget about excellence in merit. What he said was, it seems there was no ministerial oversight. Right. Goodness precious, how do you have more than 900 police personnel who were appointed illegally and then you tell the media that the ministers were not looking. There was no, no one to check them. <laughs> How does that work? So if you read the Home Minister's statement, it's, it's shocking, no ministerial oversight, which means the blame or two right. will be on the middle management people right, right. in the police department. What, DGB, mm -hmm. Inspector General, the ADGBs, commanding officers, so it's written there and it's shocking that there was no minister oversight. So I think the right thing for us to talk about merit and excellent systems for deserving youth to be able to uh, avail employment opportunities in the state is to start looking into the departmental selection process and we need oversight. So if there was no minister, ministerial oversight in the state government, then who was the chief of all these people who appointed these people? Who appointed them if there, was no, if there was no oversight in the first place? So it will be the management and the middle management leaders in the police department. That's what I think the home minister was uh, suggesting uh, you can read the response in the newspapers to it. I was so shocked when I read that. So, after they get some investigation done and try to set up, set up some kind of a system that will ensure credibility in the appointing process, we can talk about merit and oversight. All right, I think that's about all for today. Thank you so much for joining me today for this uh, discussion. Thank, Thank you so you much also. for all your inputs. That was our associate editor, L from the uh, L from the newsroom so we're discussing about the super uh, the guwahati high court has quashed the appointment of 935 police personnel from nagaland and they have given six months for to the government to the department to also advertise the appointment of this and then uh, for further information i think we'll be uh, discussing about this and also we'll be updating about this matter in our future bulletins also so i think that's about all for now keep watching on tv